Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Today we'll be looking at V-Ray and in particular how to quickly set up its V-Ray skin material shader. Now before us we have a basic scene featuring a girl looking thoughtfully out of a window. To make rendering a little lighter I've compressed the background elements into a single image plane which we can see if we hide this uh, proxy uh, wall model which is just there to help contain the lighting uh, add uh, the, sh the correct shadows uh, and uh, global illumination. So if I hide this, we can just see in the background here, we've got all the background elements that have been rendered out previously and then just added in as, a, as an image plane. So if I bring uh, that back, what this means is that we can go through the tutorial and the renders and the previews will be done a lot quicker, um, meaning that we can just focus on the elements that we want to look at and in this particular instance, this will be her skin. Now at the moment, uh, she's just got a basic Lambert applied to her because obviously we're just gonna apply the shader and work through each step. So let's just talk about the scene first. If I just go to the perspective view, what you can see is we have uh, the box, which basically, like I've just said, is just there as a proxy model just to help contain the light, uh, make sure the light that's being emitted has got something to bounce off. Um, you know, because we've got rid of the background elements, we still need something in there to help control the light that's uh, bouncing around the room. We have this light here, which is just used to uh, add a little bit of light to her back, just to help uh, trace the curves and pick her out of the background. And we also have this light here, and this is to simulate the light coming through the window uh, and onto her face. And as you can see, I've added a basic texture to this light um, just to mimic uh, the outdoors and also add a reflection into her uh, eyes as well. And these are just basic um, V-Ray lights themselves. You can go to Create Lights, V-Ray Rectangular Light, and that's all they are. I'm using those rather than Maya's built-in lights because you do get better results if you use V-Ray's own uh, nodes and shaders. So let's go back to our camera view. So let's just start by doing a quick preview render just to see what we're working with. Now first I'm going to go into my render settings and make sure I'm using V-Ray. Like so, which is exactly right and I'm going to press IPR. We're going to use the IPR render, renderer because this will allow us to adjust the shader and then the render will update interactively. So this speeds up the process as well. So if I click on that, we just wait for it to generate. There we go. So there we have the IPR render. As you can see, you could see it then building up with the different passes. If I zoom in a bit, you can also see we've got a problem because what we're seeing here are the proxy models. If I select turn press one, this is what we're seeing. We're not actually seeing the smoothed version of her. So we need to change that. So let's just close that window down. Now V-Ray at the moment is just being told to render the geometry. It's not being told to detect the subdivisions uh, which have been applied to the models. In this instance, these are um, subdivision surfaces which have been applied. So all we need to do to fix that is go to over to Overrides, click on view Viewport Subdivision. So now if we redo our IPR render, so we just wait for this to update. Now it will take slightly longer because what it's doing now is subdividing all those uh, models before it renders them. And there we can see we've got the um, we've got the nice smooth model that we're after. And doing this uh, render, I can now see that the light isn't affecting her back. But we can easily fix that, and I suspect it's the way I forgot the light linking set up. So I'm just going to go to Windows Relationship Editor, Light Linking and Light Centric. 
just move this window over here like so. So what this window does is this will control what lights affect what objects in the scene. So if we click on sunlight, we can see here that this is affecting pretty much everything. It's affecting the eyes, the cup that she's holding, her body, and everything like that. If we go to the backlight, which is the light that we want to affect her back here, if we go to the girl group, we could see it's not affecting these elements here. So if I select the body, the IPR render updates automatically, and now we can see that light is affecting her, which is exactly what we want. So we'll just add those in there. So sorry about that little detour there. So we've got the model updated so that it's now rendering smoothly. I've fixed that little bug with the light not affecting her back, but there's also some other things we can do in the render settings to help speed up uh, the rendering. So if we go back into our render settings here, if we go to settings and default displacement and subdivision, if we look down here we have this max subdivs tab. Now basically what this will do is this will subdivide every triangle by 256 times 256. So in effect, every triangle that's being rendered could possibly be subdivided 65,536 times. So obviously, when it comes to render, if it's taking an absolute age for your scene to render, this is probably why, because every model is being subdivided you know, an incredible amount of times. So what I'm gonna do from the off is I'm just gonna drop that down to possibly four. So what that will do, that will subdivide every uh, triangle then, instead of 65,000 times, it will be four times four, which is 12, which is a lot easier to work with. Now we could reduce this even more, we could make that two, but then if you're, what if you you do a render then, you may start seeing your model looking blocky. So it depends what you're after. So I'm gonna use four just for now as a safe bet. Now another thing that I'm gonna just gonna bring up quickly, I mean, we'll, we should look at this later on, but while we're in the rendering settings, we can uh, look at this. And this is also the dynamic memory limit. So this is how much memory will be used on render time. Um, if you want to speed up rendering and you've got, uh, say, 32 gig of RAM, you will want to increase this from this limit of five gig. You know, maybe increase it to 25 gig instead. Um, but you, you know, they're just a couple of options to help speed up your rendering. So let's get back on track. We've got our girl here. We've got the light set up. We know that uh, it's gonna render properly now. Actually, there's just, there's just one other thing that I wanted to touch upon before we move on to the shader, and that is, you know, use if we go to, over to our IPR here. Now, at the moment, we're telling this IPR to use the same as the production renderer. If we go over to V-Ray here, the engine it's currently using is a CPU. Now, we can if you've got a decent graphics card, you could change this. So rather than using the CPU, it could use CUDA or OpenCL. Now, obviously, if you've got a, a, an NVIDIA Quadro card, CUDA would be the best option for you. So I'm just gonna close this down here. Let's go to CUDA like so. We'll just leave those as the default. Let's set IPR rendering again. And we'll just see if this is quicker or slower than the CPU. Now that's just showing us the image that you had before, so it's just got to calculate and then rebuild the scene. Now I've got a Quadro, NVIDIA Quadro K5200, uh, which has got eight gig of onboard RAM. Um, and you would expect it to be quite quick at this stage, but as you can see, we're still waiting for this to be updated. So, 
you have to sort of take into account, do you want to use the CPU or the GPU? Do a few early tests with these options. And there we go, it's just it's suddenly updated there. But you'll notice we've got problems as well. The image plane isn't coming through. Um, and there are also other restrictions. The material that we're using on this um, tutorial, which is the V-Ray Skin MTL uh, shader, is currently not supported with V-Ray using IPR. Now the other sh uh, skin shader, the V-Ray um, Fast SSS2, that is supported. So if you're using that, then you can use your GPU. If you're not, then you will have to use your CPU. So again, there are other options of whether to use CPU versus GPU. Some elements are still not supported using your GPU, so you may be forced to use a CPU. Or it may just be a speed thing. So again, play around with those and just see what works for you. For this tutorial, I'm just going to go back to same as production renderer, CPU. So let's just jump in, select her, assign new material down here. So here we have our V-Ray materials. Now the fast SSS, as I've mentioned before, now that's the one that's been in the longest. Um, the V-Ray skin material down here has only been in since version three. So it is relatively newer. Now the fast one is great for getting quick results. Um, if I just select it now, let's look in the, uh, the attributes. As you can see, we've got all the usual um, attributes to play with. We've got diffuse, subsurface, scatter color, scatter color, radius. Um, you know, you've got a specular layer there, but you've only got one specular layer. But you've also got these uh, options here. So let's just open up an IPR render. Let's set that going again. Just so we can see the changes with the uh, custom like so. So you've got lots of custom options here so if you want a really quick setup obviously you could set, set it to skin pink and as we can see here this is updating for us if I just zoom in a bit. You know you could even set a skin uh, if, you're, you have, if you're, you've got a, a glass of milk you've got an option there which is a preset which will set it to milk. You know, and lots of other options, you know, ketchup, potatoes, anything. And these are great to get you started really quickly. And then you can start tweaking the shader to get the look that you like. So there we've got like a nice ketchupy sauce type uh, material. But there are lots of tutorials on this online already. So I've chosen to go with the root of the, the other skin shader. So I'll just close that down. Let's just go to assign new material again. And here we go. Uh, V-Ray skin material. So that's assigned there. Let's open our IPR render again just so we can see as we're tweaking the settings. And again, this currently isn't supported with the GPU rendering. It may come in the future, um, and it, it, it's highly likely that it will be, uh, but for now it's just not supported, so it's uh, probably best just to use CPU. And looking at it already, it does look different to the, uh, the other skin shader with the default pink, um, well, the preset. But, you know, we've got a good a good starting point here. Yes, she's just pink. So, you know, we need to do a lot of work on her. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the hair. Go back to our attributes. Just going to update this. Let's select that. I'm just going to copy that tab. Like so. We'll close that down. Close that down just so we can see the settings here as we're working. 
so that's better. So now we can uh, see a overall. Now scale is very important in V-Ray. It's everything is calculated off centimeters. So you have to make sure you're working in centimeters and that you're working in real world scale. Let's just go to our preferences. Go to settings. So there we can see I've already started working in centimeters. If your scene is set to meters, make sure this is changed to centimeters before you create your shader. If possible, switch it to centimeters, save the scene, outload it back in, and then create the shader. It just means the shader is generated in a scene that's based on centimeters. If, it, if you're working in meters, then the scale of everything is going to be off. Now, luckily this is all set up in centimeters. She's modeled in a real world scale. So she's almost, you know, a, a realistic height. But if you find that your model is a lot smaller than this, your scale is off, you can adjust the scale attribute here. Now, just because we're working in centimeters and she's work, she's built at a, at a real world scale, um, doesn't mean that the skin is going to be right from the off. What we, uh, what I like to do before I start playing with any of these other attributes, with a basic uh, shader on, um, just adjust the scale just to get a really rough overall uh, look. And because this scale will affect the whole shader globally. Now a, a setting of one doesn't look too bad. The ear here does look a little bit too waxy and soft. So let's just, uh, just to demonstrate, let's ramp that up to 10. And we can just see how different this looks. Now already there's uh, a lot more light being scattered under the surface, so we're losing a lot of those surface details. It's almost blown out her ear and her nose area. So we know that, I mean, if you load in your model and it looks something like this where everything's blown out, you know your scale is way too big. Just like if we set it to 0.1. And now we can see she's looking a lot flatter. So we've got the opposite effect. So there's not a lot of scattering going on. So we can adjust this. And I'm looking at the ear mainly, the ear and the nose, because what we want is we want to still get we want to still get some of the definition in her, her ear, but we don't want it completely blown out so that it's complete all the scattering's gone. So let's say 0.5 we could maybe go up a little bit more because at one her ear was just starting to get a little bit blown out so that's looking a little bit better you know and this is just rough this is just to get us started before we jump in and start playing around with all these attributes here so that's looking a bit better for me to me So the next stage, and actually what I think I might do is I might just stop this video here and pick it up um, in the next one when we start going in and actually just tweaking all of the different uh, shaders, uh, well shader attributes.